Hello, my name is Benjamin Hart. I'm an American attorney and the managing director of Integrity Legal here in Bangkok, Thailand. Yeah, I've been reading a lot lately about the sort of proposed presently kind of out there in the ether proposed WHO pandemic treaty. We've, we've discussed this a little bit previously. A couple of things I, I was reading, I think it was either the New York Times or the Washington Post, an article, and I'm not going to cite any articles in this, and just kind of, kind of an opinion piece. Um, and they were saying they brought up a good point. They said, "Look, this is not happening imminently. It's going to take some time to move this around." Yeah, maybe. I, I suspect they're probably right, but that doesn't mean people should be complacent when you're looking at, you know, major legislation, major international agreements that can have substantial impacts on people. And let's be clear, I think history will probably look back on the last couple of years and wonder how we all collectively lost our minds and allowed a lot of this to happen. Uh, now, candidly, as I've said before, you know, in the beginning phases of this whole thing, when we didn't know what was going on and we didn't know what it was, you know, I think that there was some logic in being overly prudent, if not to the point of overly cautious. But the as this has progressed, it, it clearly there's, there's politicization of a number of different aspects of this. You know, one really does start to wonder if there aren't bureaucracies that rather enjoy, you know, newfound prerogatives that have arisen out of this kind of stuff. And just, I think common sense dictates that, you know, reasonable people need to question the need for some of these things. And then, and then it comes up, you know, I know there's been a lot of hyperbole on this topic, and, and to be clear, I don't think this video is going to be quite to that point. One, again, I don't think it's quite as imminent as people think, although one thing that does kind of make me uneasy is how, especially in the U.S., how they're going to try to ratify it, if they're going to do it as a proper treaty, as they should, which is what it is, or if they're going to try to do it through some kind of different administrative sort of um, function and do it as like a rulemaking exercise or a, an administrative changes or something. Uh, it, again, if it's a treaty and it goes through the proper due process of being ratified by the U.S. Senate, uh, I'm not overly concerned uh, for a number of different reasons, uh, most notably because that's sort of the way things work in the U.S. But with respect to Thailand, you know, some concerning things I've seen in discussions on this, you know, talk of, you know, a body that's not in Thailand and not really under Thai law being able to dictate to Thailand what is a pandemic and can also apparently, you know, and this is just what I'm reading and, and these are early days. I'm not, I don't think a lot of this is firmed up, but you know, also discussion of, oh, we can use data outside the country and we don't need to, we don't need to sort of confer or get in council with, the, with a given country uh, in, when we're determining whether a pandemic exists or whether we're, we're determining whether specific stringent measures need to be taken. You know, I, one of the things I truly love about Thailand and one of the reasons I became Thai, you know, Thailand has a deft hand at dealing with international organizations, uh, international players, uh, be they colonialists, if we're going back over 100 years ago, uh, be they, you know, Cold War powers going back, you know, about half that time, you know, and at the same time, Thailand is always, and, and I, I really like this about Thailand, Thailand always charts her own course. She looks at what's good for, Thailand looks at what's good for Thailand and acts accordingly. And this is something I really hope that policymakers out there really think about in the coming months and years when this is probably going to be discussed more urgently as you know, this thing does start to be firmed up, you know, Thailand fended off colonialism once, you know, and okay, maybe, I'm not saying this is the same thing, but when you have outside powers telling Thailand what to do, I, my hackles go up when I think of that. I don't, I, I, Thailand can take care of herself. We don't need anybody else telling us what to do as far as I'm concerned. Just something to think about. Um, I do think folks that are getting really overwrought about this, this probably is not ripe enough to be overwrought about right at this minute. I'm not saying it's not a concern. I'm not saying it's not something 
to keep a close eye on. But I would, I would rather get things kind of back to the way they were, status quo ante, going back to March 2020. You know, kind of get things moving in the right direction, sort of more on the ground, more at the street level. But I do think that it is important to keep an eye on this issue because it could have tremendous ramifications for Thailand in the long term.